Hey folks, welcome to the Guns, Gear, and Grub channel. A little while ago I did a video about why I thought the AR-15 was the best survival rifle. Now, in the comments, and a lot of uh, friends told me afterwards after watching the video, that they thought maybe I understood the AK-47, that it was such a great, reliable, and robust rifle that it would make a great survival rifle, and maybe that was counting it out. Now, nothing can be farther from the truth. I think the AK is a great rifle, and it makes a great survival rifle. Now, with this in mind, um, I was at a gun show this past weekend, and I was visiting a friend who has a couple of tables there, and, you know, I saw a great AK-47 rifle that he was selling from his own personal collection that I thought would make a great survival AK rifle. So we worked at a system where I would give him some stuff that I no longer wanted, and he would give me the rifle in trade, and what I came home, was, what I came home with was this. A pre Norinco AK-47 uh, Type 56 rifle. Um, part of the trade was he gets to keep the furniture, you know, the grip and the upper and lower handguard, knowing that I would go ahead and replace these parts with something else anyway. And um, also, I wanted specifically a pre band. You might ask, why didn't I just go ahead and buy a brand new underfolder? Well, you know, as I said before in the first video, I do a lot of traveling through banned states, so I wanted to go ahead and have a, um, a pre band rifle that I can go ahead and um, you know, put a, some sort of folding stock on for its compact size and, uh, its, um, and its compactness. And that's one of the great things about an AK, is that unlike an AR-15, um, it doesn't require a buffer tube slash receiver extension, so you can go ahead and have the entire stock fold up. Now, why did I go ahead and want a, uh, an underfolder as opposed to a side folder? Uh, simple reason. Side folding stocks, uh, there are really three types. There's the wire folding stocks, which are great. They're durable if they're you know, the east block, eastern block type of stocks um, from the eastern block countries. Problem is, I don't think they give a good uh, cheek rest for shooting. Second type of stocks are uh, polymer folding stocks. Um, and I don't really like those because I find the polymer joints do break a little too easy. I've, um, I worked for a company that actually manufactured a bunch of them. And I found that the polymer joints did actually break pretty easily. The second type of joint, or the third type of joint, would be the steel side folding stocks. I found those to be too heavy. So with that in mind, I thought an underfolder would be a great alternative. It's a steel underfolder, underfolding stock, and it's not as heavy as a steel side folder, and it gives a better uh, cheek weld than does a, uh, a wire side folder. Before I go ahead and put the rifle together, I just want to briefly discuss which parts I chose to, to use for this rifle and why I chose to use them. The first thing is, I'm using this Fab Defense AG47 pistol grip as a, as a pistol grip replacement because I happen to like the contour of the grip. I think it fits my hand great and I think it makes a great pistol grip. Nothing complicated about that. The second thing is for the hand guards, I have three options. I have what's here is the Fab Defense VFR AK. This is a great, great uh, quad rail. It comes all the way back over the rear receiver cover. You can actually access the rear receiver cover from under this rail here. It is sturdy, it mounts solidly. But the thing is, I found it a little too big and a little too wide and bulky and a little heavy to make a nice lightweight survival rifle. So I didn't choose this one. The other option. I only have here the lower, but I also have the upper. It's this Fab Defense Polymer uh, 8K uh, upper and lower handguard. We also a quad rail. I chose not to use this because um, it's a great system for if you want to mount the front grip, forward grip or you want to mount the, a flashlight and a sling. But the Polymer handguard doesn't make a good um, optics mounting platform. Now, I have this here, this little. Uh, Handguard here, and I forget who makes this. I had it laying around. Um, this is the handguard I chose, and a couple reasons why. Um, it's aluminum. Um, it mounts solidly. Actually, there's two bands in here that attach over the barrel, and it clamps down to the barrel. So it's very solid. This top part clamps onto the lower part of the handguard, and it makes a great optics mounting platform. It's also much smaller than the Fab Defense one. It's much shorter, much lighter, and much narrower. 
hence it makes a better survival slash backpack rifle to go ahead and mount an optic on. I also have here, just for the fun of it, I'm going to mount this Meprolite night sights for the, uh, for the rifle. I have I had these laying around so I figured I might as well go ahead and use them. I have a small little flashlight here with a little pick rail included, just a nice little small flashlight to go ahead and mount to the rifle. Now the last thing was to go ahead and choose what type of sight I want to mount on this rifle. So my options were Aimpoint, EOTech, uh, Trijicon, uh, the Reflex ACOG, and I had this millet sight laying around also. So the thing was, the idea of this rifle is to go ahead and keep it um, compact, lightweight, and small. Small to go ahead and fit in the backpack. That's why I went and chose on the folder so it gets down to the smallest possible size. So with that in mind, the EOTech is out because it sits up way too high. And with AKs, it doesn't give a good cheek weld, you know, a shooting uh, uh, line of sight for a cheek weld. Um, aim point, a little bit better, but same thing. And it came down to these two. This is a little higher, this is a little smaller. Granted, this is the, uh, is, is the least of quality in all these uh, four sights in terms of uh, craftsmanship and durability, but... Still, I find it would be sufficient enough to go ahead and mount this to this rifle and it should serve as a nice uh, uh, survival uh, red dot optic. Folks, first things first, let's go ahead and get this rifle stripped and cleaned up to see what we're dealing with, to see if there's anything we got to address, any, uh, look for any function issues, check the trigger group. So first things first, make sure it's loaded. Off the rear receiver cover, spring. All right. Upon initial inspection, everything looks fine except for here, the gas tube. There we go. And this gas tube, you can tell, is uh, pretty badly uh, pitted, little rust spots here and there. Uh, the story I got was um, that the upper tube was wet for a while and it just kind of rusted up really badly one day without I'm realizing it. Um, normally I wouldn't believe something like that, but I know this guy and there's not a single pitting spot anywhere else on this rifle. I checked it over and it all looks completely clean. The bore is actually very bright and shiny. So, if it's, you know, actually, even the inside of the tube looks pretty good. It doesn't look like any rust or any pitting. So, it just looks like some external damage here or external pitting that really doesn't bother me that much. Either I'll just go ahead and buy another gas suit for 20 bucks or so, or, uh, you know, paint it and, you know, just deal with it that way. It'll be covered up by the, uh, the rail anyway. Um, I have everything uh, cleaned up and oiled up. I put a nice, uh, light coat of oil and everything. I checked the uh, trigger group, I checked the barrel, everything looks good to go. Even this cleaned up pretty well. Now that we have the top handguard installed, the top uh, piece here, it's nice and solid, it's pre-lined up pretty straight. Um, let's go ahead and install, assemble the rest of the rifle. The bolt, the carrier, Coil spring back in. Oh, final touch, almost forgot. One of these AK recoil buffers. I'm going to use a blue one just because. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know about this little piece here, it provides a little actual padding for when this, the, the, the way the AK works is there's a very heavy bolt that slams like this every time you fire. Now this steel bolt, heavy steel bolt, um, actually slams into this rear tronion and as such after thousands of rounds this rear tronion will go ahead um, and start coming loose at the rivets right over here. These rivets will start popping out or start coming loose.
So this gives a little extra cushioning, a little extra padding for that um, for that trunnion, and it actually extends the life of the rifle. Let's go ahead and give a little dry fire. Okay, turn on. Let's make sure it resets. It does perfect. Let's go ahead and test the safety out. Good. And check the safety out. Switch. Good. Perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and. So the top cover. Okay. Okay, folks. Here is the rifle completed. As you can see, it's um, still has a pretty small profile. Uh, yeah, the the uh, the dot site does go ahead and um, you know kind of add it up a little bit, and so does the flash up. But these are both kind of uh, worthwhile. Uh, um, sacrifices that you make in terms of size and uh, portability. Um, you go ahead, you fold this down, even with the rail, it still folds down flat. And you can go ahead and stick this into a, a backpack. You can uh, um, go ahead, and what I do is throw it in the back with, uh, instead of a toolbox, throw in a couple mags and a small chest rig, and there you go. Here's your uh, survival rifle, uh, AK survival rifle. So. Now the only thing to do now is go ahead and take it out to the range and let's see how it shoots. Okay folks, I don't know if you can tell from the video, or from the footage, but it was a pretty rainy and pretty windy day at the range the other day. And by the time I went ahead and got this rifle zeroed in, I got the red dot zeroed in, and I had a couple groups up, um, I went to go ahead and, I went down range to go ahead and uh, photograph him, but the wind blew the targets right off the stand, and it was, at that point it was just too rainy and too windy to go ahead and do it again. So I spent the rest of the day just shooting a little, like, you know, like spackle bucket lids that were up on the hill over there, and just having fun planking and you know, testing the rifle out and putting it through, putting it, putting it through its paces. Uh, I did notice that the groups were about, you know, was, you know, testing them out and zeroing the rifle in, they are about four inches or so, three and a half to four inches, and I was shooting off of a, off of a bench and, and I was using a, you know, a, a sandbag to go ahead and, you know, have a nice stable platform for zeroing. So the groups were pretty good from an AK using surplus ammo. Um, over the past couple of days, I did go ahead and use this as kind of my primary bug out rifle. It's been carried around a bit, been testing out a bit, and the truth is, it's a great rifle um, for a small package. It isn't lightweight, but the fact that it goes ahead and folds up so compactly, much smaller than an AR-15 is, even with a uh, you know an M4 stock that's collapsed and um, a 16 inch barrel, this is still a much smaller weapon when um, this. Uh, on the folders, from this folding stock is folded up. So for that, it makes a great um, compact rifle that you get a lot of punch from a small package. One of the biggest virtues of the AK rifle, besides its durability and its robustness, is that when equipped with a underfolding or a side folding stock, it makes a very compact, stowable package. Now, you'll be hard pressed to find a rifle with, with either more or similar lethality overall in such a stowable package like this AK rifle. Now, with that in mind, one of a, a basic or a decent setup for a AK survival or bug out rifle would be to have an AK underfolder, five magazines, some sort of ammo carrier of some sort, and a civilian uh, medium sized internal frame backpack um, and let me explain for the rifle itself you're not going to be you know, in any bug out situation when you're walking out there you want to keep in mind that you're not a soldier on, in combat you're not out there to go ahead and assault a position you're somebody who wants to go ahead and, and the idea is to survive to go ahead and, and have this 
for extreme uh, cases where, where that personal protection is required, personal defense is required, you mainly want to go ahead and, and keep your sidearm on your hip and accessible at all times. And I would go ahead and keep this rifle uh, stowed away inside of a civilian frame package. Inside of a civilian frame pack. Now, if you're going with a standard backpacker uh, uh, a setup, you would have a sleep mag of some sort in the bottom of the pack. And this rifle would go ahead and fit right on the side. And it would ride to right about the top, and no, nobody would be any the wiser if you're dressed wearing a pair of civilian clothing and carrying a civilian looking pack. Nobody would be any the wiser as to what you have in this pack. Now, of course, you always have your sidearm on you if, uh, if the you know if a pressing need arises to go ahead and draw from the hip if you have to that exact second. Otherwise, if you're going through a certain area where you would feel that you would need to have that AK out, all you would simply do is to go ahead. Stop for a second, open the top of the pack, and you grab the top of the rifle right here and pull it on out. Now, I would also go ahead and have a mag of some sort uh, just rubber banded to the uh, the side of the uh, forearm, and you could just go ahead and pull it out and, you know, insert the mag and open the stock, and you're ready to go. Now, besides having a rifle and a, and a mag, um, you would need some other magazines as well. You would need more than one magazine. And a great keeping with the minimalist package, the minimalist platform that this AK offers in its uh, compactness, is a great option. Is this Spec Ops brand? They call it the uh, the mount rig. Now I'll show you. I'll put it on in a second. It's a simple chest rig like this. It carries um, you know, it carries. Four magazines of AK, actually AK mags. It can carry eight uh, AR-15 mags, but this offers a very nice, small, low-profile platform for you to go ahead and have with your rifle. You know, this offers a very nice, uh, uh, minimalist platform to for basic um, survival and, and self-defense functions. Now, a great thing about this type of setup also is that when not in use it folds up very small and this actually folds up into the top pocket of my Jansport pack here. So simply fold this up, open this pouch closed, fold this rifle up, and there you have it. Nobody knows what's in there. I'm wearing a pair of jeans. I'm wearing a you know a blue shirt, and nobody knows what I'm carrying and and, and you know the lethality that this bag contains.